at once. Quite something. Yes, Oliver Cornock is with us this morning, managing editor at Oxford Business Group. Good morning, Oliver. Morning Good morning, again. Again. Good morning, Sally. Again. If you're a guest on Monday, you're going to have to talk about some sport. <laughs> but actually, for Muhammad Ali, sport was only the pure vehicle for everything else. Absolutely. And just reading about this amazing legacy, coming back from the 1960s Olympics, not being able to get a table in a restaurant because he, the colour of his skin. Um, really two, two things on the back of that really stand out to me. One, as a champion for, for the civil rights movement. And it's not that long ago is the thing that always shocks me. It's not that long ago. Um, and he's up there, obviously, with, with the greats on that front. Um, Martin Luther King, all of these people, Rosa Parks, you, you know, we all know these names, and Muhammad Ali will go down in history as being one of those. The second point, of course, is, as, as Ramadan starts today, a Muslim, a Muslim sports player, um, a Muslim boxer, um, and somebody who's held up across the world, therefore, also as a Muslim. And I think that's important as well. Have, a very proud have, Muslim. Have either of you seen the documentary When We Were Kings about his fight in Zaire? Against no, George the, right, is that the rumble in the jungle? No. no. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was the no. rumble in the jungle. Thriller Manila came yeah. afterwards. But that was another point about Ali, was that as world champion, he was prepared to take himself and his spectacle to the third world, to places that had never seen these kind of events take place before. In that documentary, he's in the cockpit of the plane, and the pilot is black, and the co-pilot as well. And he says to the camera, he says, it's a black man piloting a plane, you know. It's like, <laughs> it was all of his consciousness <clears throat> came out through the gloves. Uh, and let me just correct one uh, myth that is not true that people may like to hear is that he didn't throw away his gold medal from the Rome Olympics. Thomas right. Hauser, in the award-winning autobiography, says that he actually lost that medal. Oh. And Ali never contradicted yeah. Thomas Hauser about that. But these are just sort of examples of all the things that people talk about Muhammad Ali and kids know about him because yeah. their parents and grandparents talk about and, him. And the, the power of sport. I go all around the world working for Oxford Business Group in emerging markets. There are two things people normally talk about. One is football. I'm not of a football fan. And the other is, of course, Muhammad Ali, particularly in the Islamic world. An amazing legacy. But interesting as well, as you mentioned, the fact that he was, he was a proud Muslim and he's, he's black, of course, and with you know, the run-up to the U.S presidential elections in November and given the candidates that are currently in the mix it's a very interesting timing from that point of view it's very good timing isn't it to have a very positive message well a good reminder also of some of the core arguments at stake in that US presidential election and he was one of the people who certainly defined the 20th century uh, another person you could say was Nelson Mandela although That's he came so late in that century although Mandela himself said Muhammad Ali was my hero. Yeah. To have Nelson Mandela say that about you. And then when they met, it was a special moment, of course. Extraordinary photograph. Yes, that's right. That's in the Cape Times. OK, let's <coughs> move on. Uh, Muhammad Ali also featured on the front uh, in a banner, well, uh, 12 page souvenir yeah. supplement Nearly in all the, the Times. Papers actually but the, paper were, the story we're taking here, Sally, is? Yes, US, UK, should I say, special forces take frontline role in Syria, front page of the Times. Interesting step shift, isn't it? Boots on the ground? Is that what we're talking well, about here? Uh, it's, or an, not? it's an interesting one. I think a lot of papers, uh, a, a lot of commentators have been mooting at this in the past. Of course, we don't actually know what uh, the UK Special Forces are actually doing. Um, the, the important point from observation here for me is, of course, that um, David Cameron and, and the authorities in the UK do not need to go to Parliament to deploy um, special forces. They would, of course, with, with, with the regular army. Um, so this is interesting. We don't know any other details. There. I think this is all speculation. Um, it's interesting that there's a stony silence in the UK, but obviously people prepared to talk about it overseas. It should not come as a surprise, though, to see US, uh, UK special forces um, in this important theatre, um, which is, of course, entering its, its, its uh, fifth, sixth bloodiest year. Um, and on it goes. So um, I think most of us should be relieved. What difference will it make? Well, I in reality, to the people on the ground, if indeed it's true, it will be very, very important support, technical support, um, mentoring as well, this, this knowledge transfer from, from, from the UK Special Forces. But again, we've got nothing, <laughs> nothing verified Not there. much to go on, really. Uh, um, we've got, uh, at the moment, um, the... Uh, uh, the uh, attempt by the Iraqi army mm. to retake Fallujah. Um, and we've also got the Syrian army making advances in Raqqa. Okay. 
and over the past few months IS has definitely been on the back foot the the thing is what happens if eventually they're driven out of those mm. big strongholds of theirs where do they go what does history tell us happens to these groups when they lose their uh, their bases of power well one of the, of course there, there there are good things to take away from those advances that both the Syrians and, and the the Iraqi opposition are, are making to Isis um, at the same time if you corner someone um, sometimes they lash out and I think the the story earlier we heard about um, a threat to, to to the football in the summer things like that I think we need to be very aware mm. that if we if we corner a, 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 a monster like Isis um, where where might they strike next or how desperate might they get that's the other point and of course the other area um, there have been challenges on the financial front you know they're being squeezed even more let's look at uh, Gulf News now Iran is their headline world's leading terror sponsor that's in quotes of course because that is something that's in this uh, US State Department report just put this in perspective for us given the fact that it's highlighted on the front page of Gulf News and of course Iran is not the uh, the easiest bedfellow in this in this region just talk us through it well I think this is politicking in every sense mm -hmm. I think this is politicking from from the US um, I think this is politicking from from the Gulf it, there's no secret that Iran is um, in inextricably involved with so many of the biggest issues within the Middle East um, and therefore um, one man's freedom fighters another man's um, terrorist is, is the simple conclusion I would draw from this at the same time it is it is undeniable that Iran um, is involved ex extremely strongly with Hezbollah in, in Lebanon in Syria Hezbollah has rarely been as strong as it is now um, undoubtedly involved in, in, in Palestine um, in the occupied territories undoubtedly involved um, in, in Yemen although to what degree it, it, it's not clear so um, again this is this is, seems to me to be rather skewed okay you go for Kerry and I'll go for Jocko at the end. all right yeah very quickly then uh, let's talk about John Kerry now currently and Jack Lew the US Treasury Secretary as well both in Beijing talking trade uh, supposedly as, uh, as well as other issues mm. but the South China Sea and the dispute over that region will definitely overshadow it won't it absolutely it's all part of this pivot east of course which we've been talking about for a very long time now um, I think this is interesting coming on the back of um, Obama's increasingly strong relationship with, with Modi in India um, remember when Modi came to, to power we were all very skeptical as to what that relationship would be like very different characters in fact it's proven to be quite strong um, I would suggest that that's a real um, a, a conscious move on behalf of, of the US and the State Department um, to try and counter some of this is China's dominance of, of the Asian seas of trade of business Obama and recently they're just in Japan exactly and I think it's a, it's a it's, it's just one part of this bigger story of American concentration on trying to to, to to channel away through these choppy seas and that's of course what this is all about is the seas Novak Djokovic the eighth man uh, to win all four Grand Slam titles only the third in history to hold all four at the same time incredible incredible and um, and and poor Andy Murray who who was was con convincingly trounced and um, this guy's won, won four Grand Slams on clay a, a hugely punishing surface apparently he says not playing much <laughs> tennis <laughs> well it was it quite incredible it wasn't an yeah. easy watch at all was oh, it? well you know if you're a Murray fan it certainly wasn't you know but uh, Novak Djokovic is an absolute well I described him as a monster in Paris you know there was that cartoon film so uh, Oli thank you very much indeed really always appreciate your company in our studio thanks a lot Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you too. Thanks Have a good day. Bye bye.